HR violation. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty good authority that no one over 50 got that email at that point. <laughs> 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 it went to the students so they could put their teams together no. and they forgot right, the right. next one. <laughs> Um, so uh, I'm the first to, uh, you know, to follow direction, and uh, early in the week, uh, I think we got a direction, at least the EITL membership, to uh, uh, you know, do something that would be um, remembering of the enterprise. You know, Star Trek. Uh, I made the comment that there's actually been 17 enterprises. History, which one should we follow? I mean, come with a patch, because there's a pirate ship. Uh, but this is the best I could do before I do that. Oh, the uh, uh, When I grew up, my mother, bless her soul, she had five sons. I was the youngest. And uh, when Halloween came around, you know, she said, going to the store for your costume is for sissies. <laughs> you got to build your costume with what you can find in the house. You need to raise that same, uh, same client. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the only thing is in my house is after 40 years of going to computer conferences, there's T-shirts and other things that have come from from you know, the booth. So this is as close as I could get. <laughs> 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 It's like five sizes too small. <laughs> uh, I probably got this when I was like 25. Or <laughs> Kelly, strangely, it still fits. And, uh, so at the end of the day, though, I'm still an engineer, and so. It's no longer in business. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming. I've got a couple of stories to start the dialogue with, and we will get to dialogue. Uh, uh, these occurred just uh, not too long ago here at Oak and OIT. And this is kind of the general topic. Uh, from my perspective, don't pass up an opportunity to do something meaningful, make a difference in someone's life. Uh, so story one. <coughs> I was, uh, I've been a, uh, asked to be the acting Managing Director of Infrastructure Services a number of months ago, nine months ago, Infrastructure Engineering. And so I felt, well, I better, maybe I better learn a little bit more about the org chart of this <laughs> organization. And I was looking at the org chart, and uh, lo and behold, there's a name on the org chart that I didn't recognize. It was a new employee. I recognized the name, but didn't, couldn't place the face in my mind. And uh, so I, uh, I thought, well, I ought to at least uh, know what this person looks like. It was Evan Clement. That was a new employee. It was about, what, six or eight months ago. And I've talked, by the way, I've asked Evan and uh, the, the objects of these stories, and both of, the, both of them have given me permission to use these stories. So I uh, uh, saw Evan's name on the org chart. Uh, went and looked up his picture, and I got a good understanding. I, I recognize Evan. And put his name, went together. This is about 11.30 in the morning. And uh, I got that uh, fixated in my mind and then went to lunch over to the Cannon Center. And lo and behold, sitting across the, the cafeteria from me was Evan and his family. And uh, I thought that was interesting, you know, I was recognizing because obviously I'd just seen his picture. I'm not really good at hooking names or faces together for very long, so luckily it was with him. <laughs> I never remembered. Uh, but I thought, well, okay, so that's a new employee, reasonably new employee. I guess I was just on my way out. I was actually just noticing when I was getting up to leave. I'm going to go say something to him. So I walked over to him and shook his hand and, and introduced myself to him. And he said he knew who I was. I said, well, I know who you are, too. And, uh, didn't tell him because I'd just seen his picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I shook his hand and he's there with his wife and children. And so I, I, I met his wife and she introduced, he introduced her to me. And he had a couple of his children there with me. And, uh, and I shook their hands and, and patted them on the head. And, uh, you know, and I left. So, uh, I, had the, you know, I had this decision point. Should I say something or not? And I chose to say something. And then and then left. And never thought much more about it. Wasn't sure that they thought much more about it. They seemed a little surprised, quite frankly, that I would take the time to stop. Uh, so a couple of weeks later, uh, I was again over in the Cannon Center uh, for lunch. And there they were again. 
Now, they had been there before I was there, so I was, uh, they left before I did. And, uh, and on their way out, they came over to my table and uh, shook my hand and said, we'd just like to say hello to you. And the little boy, he's probably four, uh, came up to me and he says, stuck out his hand like this and I shook his hand. And uh, he says, uh, you know, he says, what's your name? He, he says, this is him talking to me. I said, well, I'm Kelly. So he told me his name. I thought that was great. And they walked, walked out. And uh, uh, I, you know, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Actually, I can need to modify it. They were coming in and <laughs> said that to me, right? Then on their way out, he, the little boy came over and says, we're leaving now, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> I said, great, we'll see you. And I, said, oh, anyway. and I was going to tell that story. Well, a couple of days ago, I was over in the Canada Center again. You can tell that I only eat the <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, and we won't be old, Evan and his family comes in again. Or they're in there, they're in there again, right? And I nodded to them. She was looking at me like, I wonder after like a couple of months you really recognize who we are. And I thought of Evan said, hi, nice to see you again. And on the way out, the little boy reached over and gave me a big hug. I mean, and I, I was blown away, right? And, uh, uh, and at least the point of the story from my perspective is, is I just made a choice. And at least for me, it made a difference. And I think for them it did too. Now, I'm not sure what it was, but other than this organization must think something about their people because here's, at least in his mind, the head of the organization, which was infrastructure engineering. And, and they know who I am. And uh, so that's kind of a general statement I wanted to start with, is that that's what we're going to do with everybody. Right? We have not passed up an opportunity to make a difference. Now, did it make a difference off? I don't know. Only Evan and his family can answer that. It made a difference for me. Uh, but that's not why I did it. I did it because I wanted to make a difference for him. And perhaps it did. So here's story two. Um, <coughs> I, uh, uh, this is probably a year ago. I was walking into the building and we noticed a new receptionist at the front desk. And uh, uh, what often happens is you hire new people oftentimes just start at the front desk. And, and, uh, and as I walked in, why? Uh, this was Caitlin, Caitlin Benson, and uh, she says, uh, how are you, Mr. McDonald? <laughs> and I says, well, I'm fine. And uh, she says, have a nice day, Mr. McDonald. And that's happened two or three times over the course of the week. And finally, when she came in, she says, nice to see you in the building, Mr. McDonald. I walked up to her and says, just call me Kelly. <laughs> and I'll call you Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> And after that, we had kind of developed a really pretty good relationship. Every time I saw her, I'd say something to her and ask her how school was going. And, uh, and she would you know, say something back. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, it was, it was kind of a nice, friendly feeling. And uh, uh, the office gave me a birthday card last week. And there in, in, in the birthday card was a note from Caitlin saying, thank you very much for being, for always saying something good to me every time you see me. Something to that effect. And all I can conclude is, is that, that little relationship, it, I think, made a difference to her. It certainly made a difference to me. And, and so that's the general principle. I want to get to a little more specific uh, about uh, the kinds of things that I think happen in OIT, or that ought to happen. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I think make a difference. Now, I'll tell you one other story, and then we'll start the dialogue. I'll tell you one story. Uh, my wife has worked on campus for 10 years, and she just retired. She works in another organization. She worked in another organization. Uh, not like us. Uh, I'm only looking through her eyes. I have no idea what that's like. So I'm only looking through what she is seeing. But she can't say with, with honesty that she feels the same way about that organization as I feel about this one. Uh, she feels unappreciated. She felt unappreciated. She felt uh, as if no one cared about the work she did. And I don't know if, if that's true or not, but that was the perception that she was left with. Uh, and so let's shrink this down to, that's the way we, we ought to be like this in all aspects of our life. But let's shrink it down to work. A couple of years ago, a few years ago, we did a survey of, of our employees, student and non-student employees. And there's two questions that are pretty interesting in the survey. And the first one is, is what are OIT's greatest strengths? 
and uh, far and away above every answer is its people. Okay. Uh, there were 133 respondents that marked that. Out of, you know, and, and the next one to that was 67 respondents. respondents. So I mean, that's twice and above the very next one. So that's that its people. According to the employees of this organization, its people are its most is, is OIT's greatest strength. Second question is one of the areas that need the most improvement in OIT. And uh, one of them that was high was communication, just communicating with each other. Teamwork and supervision and management needs improvement, right? <laughs> most improvement is, I guess that's probably true. So, dialogue. How do you believe about it? From my perspective, I've been in this organization a long time, since its inception, I mean, from the beginning of OIT, and before that, the precursors of OIT. And, and I've always felt like uh, the, one of the things that made a difference to me was the people, right? My interactions with others. Uh, but how do you feel? Dialogue. Kelly, when I went out and about on the, on the floors and doing whatever business I have, as I walk through different departments, people will stop me and just make conversation or whatever. It makes me feel like I'm a part of things, you know, because I tend to, if we're stuck in the corner up there, sometimes we don't feel totally a part of things, but I feel a part of the organization because people reach out to me as I walk through the in the space in the building and and just carry on conversations and it's nice to feel like I work with friends. Okay, very good. So I've worked in kind of three major companies in my career. All of them good companies, good people, good culture and everything. And I have never seen one that I've been in yet that that there was the same genuine caring for people that went well beyond work. So I think about, you know, as I look around the room here, and I think about some of the personal challenges that so many people have had. Sorry. I think about the way this organization has reached out to every one of them and to their families and how we come together. We've sent in a number of signals together. We've visited people in the hospital together. We've signed cards. We've we just showered love and prayers on people, and it's incredible. And you received a lot of those yourself. I did. Right. Very good comment. Thank you. Other comments? Yes? I have to agree that it's the people that make the biggest difference. And I think that difference can be both positive and negative. I, I found that here at OIT, it's generally the negative is much less frequent. But when it happens, it really hurts. Um, I think it, part of that comes from people with the technical bent sometimes <coughs> investing in their personal skills. Um, and so it's, it's sometimes easy to have people kind of clashing a little bit. Um, it's easier to take criticism from somebody you don't like, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, but I think that's much, like I said, I think it's very much the lesser of the two. I think by and large there's a lot more people who are willing to be kind and work through issues as opposed to Okay. Or fighting over them. Okay. Speak candidly. If you don't feel the same, help us understand your perspective. Other comments? I think personally we do really well. I think sometimes when it gets to professionally, we tend to draw some territory lines. Um, I think we're really good at being friends. I mean, I'm amazed. People that, that I worked with when I first started here 13 years ago still treat me like, you know, um, I'm a good, good friend and I love that. But sometimes when I'm in my job and I'm trying to help facilitate something, it's easy for me to step on a toe or cross a line that I didn't know existed. And I hear about that in roundabout ways, but not directly. It's like you don't want to have that hard conversation that says, yeah, you did this, and it, it caused us problems. Um, I would prefer to have someone just come and tell me, really, stop, I need you to do it this way, or um, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? Let me help you. Okay. But I tend to get my corrective um, information usually in a very roundabout way, and I end up with a lot of questions that I have answers to. So I think you're saying is, is this is good and positive, but sometimes it does get in the way of that 
team activity. Yeah, <laughs> just, a, just a good, kind, honest conversation does much to redirect somebody who is needing redirection. And, sure. and I think that's one thing that we're not as great at. Okay. We, we want to be so kind. We, we forget that we can be kind and corrective at the same time. Okay. I think one thing we've talked about is, is uh, respect. I think respect is an awful lot of weight. We, we have friendships here, which I think are extremely important, as was really mentioned. Um, and we have a degree of professionalism, I hope we do anyway, to work through maybe some difficult conversations or whatever. Um, but I think that if we have respect for each other and for, for what we do and, and how we do it, even if we don't understand, then I think that, that we will treat each other better. And I think that makes for a better environment. Okay. And, I, and I think that makes for really solid, lasting relationships. Okay. So this bridge between professionalism, let's call it, and, uh, and, and kindness is a trust, right? Right. right. Mutual respect and right. trust. Mutual respect and trust. Okay, good comment. Others? How do you feel? Well, I, I have, at least in my situation, found a vast improvement um, in one area, and that's that I, I feel like when I speak, people actually listen. And, and there have been times in my career when I felt like, um, you know, you go in to talk to someone, and their mind's made up, and they're listening with one ear and thinking about how they're going to rebut you with the other. Their, their mind, and and I've really appreciated uh, the the feeling that when you go to talk to someone, that they're actually interested in what you're saying, you're saying, and that um, there's value in in your opinion and in your view. Okay, keep going. This is good. You want to have a negative? <laughs> what may have happened that was not as warm and fuzzy as perhaps the example I gave. I don't know about your hat, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, you know, I'm going to put a business slide on this just a little bit. Uh, only because. You know, we, we, we can talk about this all day, and I think we can have this field this up, but what's the, what's the value to OIT, and especially, how can we start making a difference here, right? Not only with OIT, but with the people. Yes? So, um, we've been talking about finish this mm -hmm. year, and what does that mean? And I think if we look at it from the people who are our customers, and finish solutions and finish support, it's not about the technology. It's about taking the time and finding out at the lowest level you possibly can what is it they're actually trying to do. And I think when we just focus entirely on the technology solution and say, well, it's working just fine, it's working as design, you know, and then turn and walk out of the door and we're not verifying that they got the answer that they needed or whatnot, we are not making that connection not being professional and not providing finished solutions. Okay, so we may be doing this internally, but maybe not as much as we ought to with our customers. Yeah. Right? That same kind of yeah. mutual respect, trust, professionalism, right? kindness and professionalism. That's an interesting <coughs> thing, the, the cause of the work. Professionalism kind of judged by what the world would say. Kindness is kind of what we would say, perhaps from our spiritual roots. And where's the middle ground for realistically working, right? Well, and just one more thought on that, you know, um, Elder Bednar quoted this, and I forget who originally said it, but he said, you know, it's, it's wonderful to be spiritual. It's better to be spiritual and competent. And he was talking specifically to church employees around doing their jobs, performing well, and being professional. Okay. All right. Very good. Yes? So I think it's also um, not just about the, the positive relationship and this might not be to what we're talking about, but I think it's important that um, the people that, that I feel like I respected and, um, and enjoy the relationship with most are the people that have given me feedback on how I can grow and uh, continue to kind of push myself and strive for more. Okay, very good. Okay, so I finally decided that 
university can't do too much to me if I give you some information that maybe I had not <laughs> 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 OIT is a $40 million business. Um, that's our operating budget, basically. Uh, and uh, you know, one time, I, I, I checked in Utah County, and we were the third largest employee uh, business in Utah County. OIT? OIT. Okay. Uh, that was behind, now that would be you know, BYU, obviously, in Kansas, and so BYU was the biggest employer in, in, in Utah County. And Geneva and New Skin were ahead of us, I think, in life. And uh, uh, now, that's not really a dollar value, it was in people, mm -hmm. as, a, as an employer. Uh, but that's a pretty good sized business. And 85% of that operating cost is the cost of labor. Okay? That's our salaries and our benefits, primarily. Uh, and so here's the real business directive is, is how can we get more value out of our labor, out of our people, right? And we call them human resources. You know, that sounds like a, you know, something else that's in the, in the warehouse and they're going to go get another pallet full of human resources. <laughs> uh, you all know that that's not the way it is. It's, it's, it's a dichotomy, right? Because on one side, the other 15% is, uh, is equipment and software and other kinds of things like that, services that we, that we have to buy. Uh, and how do we treat that as the inanimate things that they are and treat the people, that the, the human beings that they are and get the most value out of it. it makes this business synergistic. For the same amount of money, I believe, we can get more value out of this organization overall. So I think we ought to continually be striving to somehow improve our use of the resource to better fill our part of the mission of the university. Right? Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next session. That's the details of BYU a little bit more. Jim. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, one thing I, I thought about. So what portion of this is yours? Is yeah. Anyway, no, and I, and I thought about this quite, quite often. Every once in a while, I will hear, not necessarily about me, but perhaps somebody else from the organization, I really like that person. I just don't like dealing with OIT. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, that's a, that, that's, that hurts sometimes in a way. And how do we translate all these great comments about individuals? You know, I, I love working here because as other comments were made, I really like the people here. And, I, and we have a tremendous value, but how do we translate that into our organization to where people see and trust us as an organization rather than individuals within the yeah. organization? I think you're getting right to the heart of it because if that's true, which I know it is, and people say they don't like OIT, it's the people they don't like, right? right? Exactly. Because that's what OIT is, is yeah. the people. Yeah, I mean, you know, I may like you, but I don't like most of <laughs> I'm not sure it's necessarily the people. We have a whole lot of processes and procedures in place. But who implemented those? And I'm getting the feeling from our customers that they feel bound by those. And I'm not sure how do we, we follow our processes and yet still have a heart. And I'm not sure I understand that yet. So I was in a meeting this morning. Michelle and I were in a meeting with the library this morning. And uh, uh, they made a statement which I was kind of surprised at. Uh, they said something like, uh, we were told by OIT that we can't put equipment in the data center if it's purchased with, OIT, with donated funds, right? And I'm thinking back, did I ever say that? <laughs> I never said that. Now, Jim said it. All right, there's the call for it. <laughs> but you know, the fact was is they were kind of chagrined by a, a, a policy or process statement that they at least interpreted that we had made. Now I think I knew what the source of that statement was, and I think they just made they, they put their own interpretation on what I think they heard. You know, I, I'm thinking I know what was said to them, and then they just turned it into their own their own understanding. Because right? we've had a lot of conversations about ITI, right. departmental, and everything. 
And from those discussions, you could assume a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. And so I made the statement, I said, I'm not sure that that's true in the sense that you're interpreting it. Now, I know that we can't, and I just boil it down to a single piece of hardware. I don't feel comfortable buying a single piece of hardware with ITI funds and donated funds, mainly because when you replace it in the future, how do you figure out what, you know, is responsible for what? But I don't think I would translate that into you can't put a piece of donated equipment in the, in the data center. And in fact, go ahead and do it. Who am I to do this? <laughs> Someone else. Elaine well, has to live with that. Do it on January 1. Isn't that, I know we can improve it, isn't that sometimes just a factor? We're telling them the news they don't want to hear. No, you cannot have infinite bandwidth at <clears throat> zero cost. I mean, yeah. there's just certain realities sure. that sometimes yeah. they don't want to live with, no, but we have to tell them this is just the way. Uh, you cannot live with the law of physics, right? You can't live with yeah. the law of physics. I think a lot of times when we talk about um, processes and policies and procedures and things like that, um, I know as I talk to the rest of the campus community and coming from that in some way, it typically, if you have a thrill of understanding of what that policy procedure um, or process is, it's not a problem for you. It's usually a lack of understanding of it or yeah. a misunderstanding of the Elysium 10 for the full, I think very much like what you said, a, a misconception of really what a rule or an imposed rule or even a uh, pseudo rule, but yeah, not right. really rules. I think so. I, I think that some, this could be an example. <laughs> 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 People don't take me seriously. <laughs> 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 but um, th this is an example of kindness getting in the way. That people will come against a policy that they disagree with, but they won't say, I think that's a dumb policy. Yeah. Uh, I remember saying to you in a meeting once, who made that lily livid management decision? <laughs> And he said, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what a fine decision of yours. <laughs> we should feel free to push against things that we don't understand or, <coughs> or, 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 or stuff that we don't agree with. And then also, when people come and tell us that they think what we have come up with is done, we should welcome criticism. And I don't know that that's always done. Okay, all right, very good. Let's let's finalize this down to a final topic. We've still got about 20 minutes. I'd like to start making a list. Would you scribe for us? Sure. Okay. So we, the, the, the theme here was, don't pass up an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life, all right? I think that that can apply to us individually, and I hope we would look for those opportunities individually and organizationally, because the organization is people, right? So let's start making a list of what we can do, what we could start doing, what we could consider. Let's start the dialogue here, right? Some of these may take some dialogue for a while before we figure out how we really pull this off. But what could we do to make a difference in someone's life? And I'm saying inside of OIT as employees and outside of OIT at the university. I think the most the simplest way we can is just to say hi to someone. Okay, and just be friendly. Just be more friendly, right? And start okay. putting your head down. And just pretend you don't know anyone. Yeah, I know it's you usually like this. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on because I'm focusing on <laughs> just the <laughs> 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 Okay, very good. Yes. We need to learn each other's names and use each other's names. Okay, absolutely. And not be embarrassed to ask someone the name again if we've forgotten it. Okay, very good. Great. Keep going. Let's, Let's get, get this list. I think it's a small acts of kindness. It doesn't okay. hurt anybody. It takes a second. And they're fun. I mean, I, 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 mean, I just have had a. I go to the cannabis and I said, one word, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go sit with the next <laughs> 
In fact, his wife invited me to their table. <laughs> I think being interested in and acknowledging what's happening in people's lives, you know, like we get these little notifications about births and stuff, and taking the time to not just read it, but sometimes following up and saying, you know, this is so cool to hear about this. How about, a, how about a mailing list? That that's what it's for. That's, that's the only point of mailing list, right? Yeah. People can opt out, but let's start them by, by default. You're opted in, right? Yeah. So you did that was my mailing list about uh, about personal personal th uh, personal events in the lives of people of yeah. employees. That's called Facebook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Email was so old school. So old school. Or Instagram or. <laughs> supposed to start. Uh, it seems like if we at least listen to what they're uh, what they're trying to do and then uh, you know direct them to the right place and, and you know have that process follow through. Like, you know not just say well I'm not going to take care of it, you know, call somebody else. I'm gonna show you something more for people. That's <laughs> that's maybe how would you summarize that? Warm handoff. Warm handoff? Okay, these have been these have been kind of an employee side. Uh, maybe we ought to make this a list for employees and then another one is how about to the campus okay. By the way, I'm serious about this Facebook group. I got this email or this is a text message from someone. I guess this was actually in the devotional on Tuesday. The devotional was like broadcast of an old, an old earlier talk. And somebody sent me that this picture, I'm sure it's a frame of the video, and he, this is President Samuelson giving his talk, and there I am in the background yawning. <laughs> <laughs> The campus community needs to see us as human beings. <laughs> so let's put that up, right? What can we do to make the campus believe that we're more human and not embarrass ourselves too much? That's right. Yeah. Uh, Jim and then up here. But. You know, I think this goes along with what Mark said, but it, I think we need, no matter who we are, no matter what our job description is, no matter what our role is, we need to take ownership okay. of, of, of a situation, good or bad. Not be afraid of it. Not saying it's not, not, right, exactly. Yeah. Instead of saying, well, I don't think that's not my job. So demonstrate accountability. That might go and we don't need those on campus. Place. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let's just make one list and then we'll separate them later. Uh, let's see, I think Noah and then Rhea and then Jeff. I think that one of the things that helps me, and so I would turn it around and say it would help others, is understanding why. There are a lot of policies on campus that I just fight against. Yeah. But if I understood why that policy was in place, or that procedure was done that way, then okay, I understand that. So I'm happy to do so it. So tell more why. So tell others more why of what we do. Yeah, that was probably the issue this morning, right? I told them why, told the library why we would there be a separation, and they said, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, really. So I think that something that we've seen a little bit of a change in lately that seems to be making a big difference with our partners is inviting them in the dialogue before we go and do something. So we've been trying to say, we're, we've got three custom rooms in the JFSB that are gonna be remodeled. And I mean, we why. got, instead of just doing them our standard way without talking to them, we've invited any faculty who teach in those rooms or are going to teach in those rooms to come to a meeting. And we're getting a surprising number who are saying, I want to be there, I want to be there. Um, I, I was really surprised how many wanted to participate. I think we don't 
often open it up and say, this is going to affect you. Come talk to us. Right. Sometimes when we call them customers, they forget that they're human beings. Well, I was just going to recount the activity we had yesterday where we had you know, everybody together for the chili. And I think there are a number of um, employees that never associate with that. I would like to see, however possible, to get a better participation in that. I think that's a great event. Maybe we take it to their desk. We can <laughs> wait on one curry at a time. <laughs> I had three bowls of chili, which is unusual for me. And I paid for it all night. <laughs> 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 you or your wife? <laughs> yeah, she suffered too. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe do soup and chili so that the people who are can't yeah. eat chili. I heard several people True. say, I can't I eat chili. Yeah, okay, that's good. So that's a great we, comment. Is, and maybe yeah. they perceive it as they're not very sensitive to me. I mean, it's very possible. That's well, they, I think they just don't want to stick right. out yeah. as someone who can't eat it, so they just don't okay. eat it. All right, well, you just hold on all the desserts. Keep going. still got 15 minutes. But along that exact same line, eight people, you know, my team were not in this building, and even though the invitation gets mailed to them, they don't feel welcome. Okay. That, that's what they tell me. When I go ask them, why don't you come to this, they tell me, we don't feel welcome in the ITV. That might be there issue, but I think we should all be aware of it and figure out ways we can better make them feel that, That's a great comment. Because so to that point, maybe we ought to be wearing name tags when we have those <laughs> I mean, because there's a lot of people I don't know. Yeah, I know a lot of people. Good, sure. Michelle. There, there are things that um, I think we try to improve on. Um, and the Chili Fest is one of those, you know, broadening, getting a broader committee so that we can represent more people in those things. And I think, I think sometimes it, it is just trying to, as Elaine yeah. said, trying to look from their perspective. Yeah, we're going to have a chili fest in the data center. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go out the door. <laughs> Let them all come. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we have to do this so that he's done in different places. Rush that. I understand. But yeah. the point is, is, we've got a chili fest for them. I'll bring to <laughs> Yes. Are there activities besides food centric activities that would attract some of those in our company? Like, like yeah. basketball and yeah. basketball. <laughs> 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 the volleyball and the there. I mean, I think sure. open some of those things up to be a little bit more. Yeah, how many people were out there? I mean, there was a people playing, but how many people gathered? Oh, we had just a handful. And and we didn't send it out to the, the full time. That was. That well, was I don't, I don't was know about it. Was that a secret list of younger? It was. It was designed. We were just trying to create something fun at the last minute, but but I think um, yeah, as far as getting other people involved and stuff like that, I mean, um, Danny and I were just talking too. It's it's hard when people are in different locations, and sometimes it's using an excuse. Sometimes it's just that you know they're just not as familiar, and having different things that lets them be, they have to also want to participate. They also have to make sure. it. It's a, it's a We're not going to force people to do it. Right? Yeah. I was going to say, that's one of the things I like about the new boxing ball thing is it's a one-on-one. -on -one. While you're playing, I get to know students that's and really other cool. people that I, I won't ever work with necessarily. But now when I see them, we can say hi because I know their name now or yeah. I know a little bit about them and where they're working and what they're doing. You know, we do this mentoring as an organization, which I think is great. I enjoy it very much. But it's almost like each little unit, each little group inside of uh, OIT should be doing that all the time, right? Uh, it's almost like when a student is hired, they almost want to assign them to a mentor for a couple of months, and then they move to another mentor, and so on, right? Yes, Paul. I was just thinking, this isn't an example of one of these, but it seems to me that all of these are instances of ways that we can build positive relationships with people so that when they have issues that the communication can flow freely right. and we can resolve them. Yeah. And they, they trust you enough, trust, trust, they respect you enough. Yeah. We start talking about the hard stuff. Right? And they feel com that we're confident they can you know, resolve it. Very good. <laughs> so I'm just going to add one more thing to um, being involved and in, if you see something and feeling like you can't participate in it, sometimes that's something that we put up um, I'm going to take volleyball, for instance. If you, I've been out there many times and just wanted to play, they, they let me join right in. So sometimes it's our own self as well. We kind of put up those barriers and think, oh, well, it's not my group, I can't do it. But if you just 
take that step to ask. <laughs> Sometimes it's just open. Okay, very good. Was your hand back here somewhere? <clears throat> Where was it? Oh, there. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, location here. Well, I have two, two things. One, uh, we have to think about, too, the logistics of getting people to and from things. So they may come or want to come, but they don't want to go back and try to park. Yeah. And so just the they weigh it and they go, you know what, it's probably not. And there is might be, I can get you. Do we run a van? Do we run a van? Let's build things. another floor and move everybody <laughs> here. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Kelly, can we get a fleet of segways? <laughs> I'll sign anything. <laughs> get that requisition in quick. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the things that I think would help is we, we sometimes we take accountability, but then we don't give it to the person who's really supposed to do it. And so, uh, People need to be allowed to do their jobs and not uh, have someone just, you know, assume it. Yeah. Because I got the phone call, I'll just run with it. That that kind of decreases our ability to engage positively. Okay. These are all good items. I think we ought to, you know, we have to start looking at this list and see if there's some of these things we can implement and make the list longer. Just say so. But I'm wondering about something that really makes a difference. I think about the early part of my career when there were what I thought were old timers in the organization at that time. And some of them ignored me, right? Mm -hmm. This is the old timers. <laughs> <laughs> some of them ignored me. And I suspect that some of our staff, young staff, might feel that way. But some of them didn't. More of them didn't than did. And, and the ones that didn't, they tried really hard to help me, right? And some of it was as simple as Don H. Remember any of you remember the name Don Extra? Yeah. You could go to Don, and it didn't matter what he was doing, you could ask him a question, and he would stop and answer the question. Right? Didn't matter what he was doing. And there were a lot of people like that. You know, for me, the, the defining moment was the Willard Gardner. He basically uh, gave me the keys to defining a new direction for BYU. And said, I said, so what's my job description? He says, just do good things for the others. <laughs> I had it for a few years and I loved it, right? Can we look for those kinds of things for people? Right? For our employees. This is now focusing on <coughs> our employees. For full time, let's do it for us. What are some of the things we could do specifically? Yes. In our team, we've been training our students a little bit above and beyond what is technically required. Although our framework was so complicated that it was kind of required. Um, but in the, I've had multiple students leave our team for lucrative positions, and most of them have come back and said thank you. You know, that we've given them an opportunity that was even more valuable than the degree, because now they have marketable skills that they can use in the Take that label up. More and better training. Yes. That, that. Mm -hmm. right. More bold training. Everyone that's a supervisor here. Someone else, whether full-time or part-time people, ought to be thinking all the time, what should the training be like? Instead of an afterthought. I go back to my wife's uh, organization. I, you know, I took, brought her home one of these brochures, and I was just going to Salt Lake. You know, one of these training sessions in Salt Lake. And so she uh, bunched up her courage and went to her supervisor and said, is it an impossibility I can maybe go to this? She says, no, I just go to the free stuff here on campus. And so what did she think she felt like? I'm not worth that. 90 bucks. I think it was like the session. I she didn't even drive herself. Right? So we've got to do a better job, more and better training. Okay. Yes, what else? I think we need to do a better job on more and better leadership experience. Okay. All right. Leadership experience. Right? Giving people an opportunity to practice leading mm -hmm. before they want to apply for a job that requires probably a lot of experience at it. That's probably one of our biggest weaknesses, actually, is, is let's call it management and leadership training. Right? Just opportunities for people to learn about the budget of OT and those kinds of things. Good. Michelle and Daniel. I think uh, 
the other along those same lines is sometimes when um, as managers we're going to be out or your manager is going to be out someone it's a good opportunity to give the rings to someone else to cover for you and I, I don't see that happening a lot within BYU okay very good you know this 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 one kind of sounds a little petty but it goes along the same lines <coughs> that you were just saying you know, when it comes to, we've been having this discussion recently in Edge because we have hardware up for replacement. And, um, you know, if the, if the laptop that the employee wants is only two or $300 more than the one that is standard or whatever we call, what does that say to the employee when you say no to that? You know, it's two or 300 bucks spread across three years and you compare that to the cost of that employee to the university, yeah, it's, yeah. it's nothing. And, but that two or 300 bucks makes them feel appreciated and like, like they're worthwhile. There's some hands over here. Russ? I think one of the best things we can do is be open-minded um, and realize that the way we've always done it or the way we're doing it now is not necessarily the only or best way to do it. Okay, so, so listen to the input on that, by the way. I think I actually ignored the <laughs> well, well, that was a while ago when we saw that campus up there, and I was going to say, since I've been here, which is coming up for like 30 years, um, just once a month, I've, I've taken <coughs> at least an hour, sometimes two hours off, and I've gone for a campus walkabout. And I, if I see a door that says, nobody but library employees, then I go through the door and I say, <laughs> what are you people doing that is so secret that I can't know what it is? There's <laughs> 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 a little lady behind there, clearly, does not get many visitors. Tell me what there are a couple places you don't the eyes called up to. trust them to, to weed out and do new things, right? And mentor them so they're not left on their own. But it's easy to just give them the, the monotonous stuff, the easy stuff that we've already made all the decisions on. But if you task them with coming up with something new and better, they're great at doing it. I mean, all our employees are super uh, How about, good, how about just thinking to yourself, looking across the white team, who could I take under my wing and actually make a difference in that person's employment? I was just thinking that a lot of these things are about how we um, really engage employees, and uh, some of the some of the literature suggests that some of the keys to engaging or an engaged employee is first of all, and we covered that like in the first column, they like the people they're working sure. with, right? The second is a reason somebody is engaged is because they believe they make a difference. So I think we ought to be thinking about what can we do to help the people that we work with not only feel they're making a difference, but know that they're making a difference. You know, like some things that, and the third thing is, and it's, it's also identified here, is opportunities to grow. Because nobody wants to feel like, you know, this is all I'm ever going to be, <laughs> you know. But so I think if we maybe, you know, we've got, we've got the relationships thing, you know, that we'd be working on. But, those other two, you know, it's it's the topic of your of your dialogue today. Not only how can I personally make a difference, but what things can I do to make the people that I'm working with that are under my stewardship? Because some of these things, you know, I was thinking about why people don't come and stuff, and it's like at church, you know, it's like weeks, you know, you have a friend, and the friend says, "Come on down with me," or the leader, you know, takes responsibility. I think those of us who are in leadership roles ought to say. Mike Brown is exceptional at this, taking his group to like the devotional forums. They all go together, you know, let's all go over to the forum or, you know, this sense of more of a team, it's almost like I have a family here at work, they care about me, they know about me, um, you know, start local <laughs> and then, then it kind of impacts globally. So. Yeah, very good, very good. I, I was thinking that one of those questions could be, what, what is it that I am doing? What, mm -hmm. what is it that I'm doing? What, okay. what do I, what do I contribute? 
rather than yourself. be focusing on what can how can I help Sarah be better? It's what can I do okay. to be better? Very good. Maybe Sarah can help me be better. Okay, very good. All right, I think we're about out of time. One more comment. One of the things that amazes me about <laughs> some of the, the leaders and managers within OIT is every day they put their reputation in the hands of other people. And and, and that just amazes me that, that my boss, Scott Hunt, can stand up and give a presentation and, and know that at the end of the day, his success depends on what I do. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to get to the point where we're trusting our other employees in the same way. There's, there's nothing that builds more trust in yourself than someone trusting you to that level. Yeah. Right. Very good. Okay, I think we're about out of time. Uh, this is a great topic, and it's certainly, uh, hopefully this dialogue has expanded all of our conversation. I mean, we went to places I didn't think we were going to do, and that's the whole point of a dialogue, in my opinion. So let's uh, let's keep thinking this. I assume we'll have someone that can write this stuff down. And I'll just take a picture. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, I'm, I'm and so old school, I, I was going to copy it down, I was going to write it longhand. <laughs> Just take a picture, save as a PDF. All right. So, no, that's it. The next one is in November. I think it's the. Uh, it's. We it, still have a dedicated to it. Like the Friday after Thanksgiving, right? No. One <laughs> <laughs> the Friday before. It is. Okay. And this is about the details of BYU. So come and see what that's all about. Behind the scenes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That, uh, uh, that uh, this is a gift from the, one of the kings of core. System 378, job control language. No. <laughs> 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 Just went by my bedside. <laughs> 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 Earlier copy. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.